is about. So I was very uh, happy when Nage said, it's not just consumer centricity and service excellence, which we've been listening for the past 20 years as a common theme in RAI, uh, but also technology as one of the key areas uh, that is increasingly going to get focus as we look at uh, events such as this. And uh, when it comes to technology, it's not, uh, it's not just the shiny objects, right? Technology is there to serve a purpose, and at the heart of it is the consumer. And uh, therefore, if I were to just draw upon our experience and look at how technology has helped uh, transform, like we say, it's not just digital, right? So while you see digital disruption in retail, a lot of uh, what we heard today was what we've started calling as digital, right? So that's where physical stores come together uh, with the online experience, and there's a digital experience. And core to this, if you look at uh, the next slide, uh, you'll see that there are a, a lot of uh, uh, new ways by which we're providing convenience to consumers. And one big, uh, sorry, is this? Ah, great, good. Right, so if you see one, some of the big terms there, You'll see buy online, pick up in the store, try online, ship to st home, et cetera, right? Now, all of this is great. Uh, a panelist mentioned about how convenience is going to be really a, a place to build value for consumers. But all of this comes when you have a certain level of maturity at the back end, right? Unless you know uh, who your consumer is, unless you know where your inventory is, you're not going to be able to do many of this, right? So a lot of what we work when it comes to uh, uh, retailers uh, in an Indian context is that data is simply not available, and if it is available, it's not clean enough to use. And therefore, a lot of digital is getting the plumbing right in terms of do I have the right data which I can use? Do I have one view of the customer? Uh, we recently saw, um, again on stage, where someone spoke about different businesses of the same brand not knowing their consumers enough, right? And this is a recurring pattern. It's not just different businesses within the same group or brand. It's also different channels. While you might have an MBO or an EBO or a large format store or online, you, each of these businesses might really not have a unified view of the consumer. So while the consumer goes to uh, an exclusive brand outlet for an experience, he would be given a much, a very different experience compared to what he gets in an MBO, right? So, so it's important to know who your consumer is, and that's the start, but that's not enough. Second, you need to know where your inventory lies for solving all of these problems. So it's great to say click and pick, but you can only do click and pick if you have data. So the first learning is, do I have my data right? And is it clean enough for me to use? So that's the start of any dis digital uh, disruption exercise. Uh, related to that is also connectivity. We spoke a lot about connectedness uh, and why it's throwing up opportunities. So a big part of connectedness is also to ensure that your different channels are connected to each other and you have a real-time view, right? So as we go forward with data, you'll see that we talk a lot about uh, analytics, right? There was a lot of discussion which was pretty engaging on analytics in the morning. Now, how is analytics going to happen is also a function of uh, uh, what is it that you have to analyze. And if you look at a lot of what we do, it's all post-mortem, right? A lot of what we want to do is in the area of prediction or predictive models. So unless and until uh, we start focusing on what is it that I want to do rather than what is it that I've already done, that's going to be a big difference in terms of how we adopt when it comes to digital disruption. So again, like we say, we speak of assisted recommendation engine. Now that's a great uh, predictive uh, area where you can predict what to sell uh, as a next action item for the consumer, right? So that is uh, based on past experience, what can I recommend? Now that's a great technology offering to have. But unless and until you know what your consumer has done, in other channels or in other brands that you offer, you will not be able to have a holistic view of the consumer, right? And therefore, it is important to not only get your data on the consumer, right, but also have an understanding of, of all his different relationships. So one of the big areas we work with is moving from the individual to the household, right? Uh, we had an experience where a lot of jewelry promotion was going to uh, uh, the husband in the house when it was actually because his mobile number was shared and it wasn't going to the uh, lady in the house who was going to buy a lot more. 
right? And therefore, integrating household information and attacking problems at a household level is now something which a lot of uh, 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 brands are looking at. And hence, the understanding of not just the unit, which is the individual, but also moving beyond and understanding the family. Then these are all great uh, terms to have, you know, AR, VR, right? Now, how is AR, VR going to uh, be implemented in a retail context, right? Is it something that the consumer really wants? There are cases where, uh, if you look at auto as an industry, they've applied it very well because the entire experience of stimulation has now been uh, extended. For, if you want to get a simple uh, driver's license, you can do it simulated, right? So there have been cases where uh, people have done it well, but if you just do a technology for the sake of doing it, it ain't going to work. And hence, uh, is there a consumer need that you're fulfilling? Is it going to enhance its experience? And hence, going forward, do I need to implement this technology or not? So these are, uh, uh, these are various ways by which uh, uh, value is being added. Personalization, right? We speak a lot about Gen Next and wanting to do personalization. Now, one big part of personalization is also where will you do it and how will you do it? And therefore, what we've seen is a lot of this is also in the mindset. You prototype, you try something quickly. If it doesn't work, move on, right? So rather than doing things sequentially, which is how we used to implement technology in the past. Business used to come out with a business roadmap, and then technology used to follow with a technology roadmap, and then you had a waterfall process, which used to go for two years, and finally you would get an outcome which wouldn't really serve uh, the needs that you have, right? Therefore, it is important to also build this agile mindset if all of this has to happen and fail fast and fail quickly and learn from those mistakes and move on and stop doing things sequentially and start doing things in parallel, right? So this is a, a different way of approaching technology implementation and increasingly we'll see that this is going to be the model going forward rather than looking at very large scale implementation of technology which is sequential. Right, so a lot of our discussion today has been outside in. We've been talking about consumers, we've been talking about partners, we've been talking about the ecosystem. A big part of all of this is also internal, right? So if you look at this report, it focuses a lot on uh, the internal organization. And one of the biggest aspects of internal organization is your cost to serve. Uh, We're increasingly seeing this in consumer brands that it's not about coverage. I mean, you look at FMCG brands, 10 years back, they all were talking rural, they were all talking about extending coverage to the next tiers of towns, etc. What we are now seeing is a move back to urban, a move to something called weighted distribution. It's not just the absolute number of outlets you cover, but it is being present in the outlets that matter. So we just saw a previous slide where we said single stores or MBOs or general trade, however you call it, they aren't going to go away. I mean, the projections even today are about two-thirds of retail is still going to be uh, small shops uh, 10 years from now. And hence, it is important that you look at some of these ideal stores, right? And in every industry, you would have this. These are the 20% of your MBOs, which are contributing to 80% of your impact. Uh, many of the e-commerce retailers will not tell you this, but uh, just one stretch, I mean, there was a reference to the southern city, which is actually Bangalore, right? There's one stretch of road between Silk Board and, uh, uh, and Martahalli, right? Which is, uh, which is about 12, 13 kilometers. The catchment on the left and the right, all put together, contributes to 1% of e-commerce sales today, right? So there are going to be micro catchments. Gurgaon, great example. So we will see a lot of competition heat up in these micro catchments. We will also see a lot of play in the lead MBOs. And lead MBOs are not going to be easy, right? Because to supply to a lead MBO, many firms, even today, many brands. I mean, we were working for an MNC, 50 years of experience in India. They did not know their sellouts at the store because they had a partner in between. So they knew their sell-ins, right, which is the primaries, right? And then they knew the sell-throughs, which is from the tier one partner uh, to the tier two partner. But beyond that, they had no idea about the consumer. So a lot of their effort just went into basic technology, like footfalls, understanding conversions, understanding average bill value at these EBOs, right? Therefore, what, what's going to be important is to get your basics right. And one of the big part of that is to get your internal organization right. So a lot of the focus on the report is going to be uh, around supply chain. It's going to be around inventory and how you have a dynamic view of inventory because ultimately in India, cost of real estate is high. You have to make your inventory turns and therefore how do you optimize inventory across. And the third big area is uh, to look at availability. Uh, while we might say the new age customer has a lot of choice, there's a lot of uh, demand, 
Even today, in a lot of parts of retail, supply creates demand. And therefore, if availability is not looked at, and if availability is not looked at in a unified way across all of your channels, what's happened is most of the brands are organized around EBO, MBO, LFR, online, key accounts, etc. right? So there isn't enough transfer of knowledge because of which we now have competition between channels and there's a lot of channel conflict which happens, right, between uh, different channels. So I know of an instance where the retailer has stopped looking at same store sales. What they look at is same store catchment sales, right? So across all of my four formats, am I growing in that catchment or not? And hence, am I providing the right uh, inventory for that catchment, right? So therefore, a lot of this is linked around supply chain. It's also linked about how you can uh, reduce your cost to serve by looking at logistics, and hence, how is it that uh, the logistics cost can be reduced when you have a more integrated view of your channels? Right, important part, finance. There is so much of technology which applies to finance, and hence, that's a big area where we're seeing automation, where we're seeing uh, intelligence being applied, and a lot of this is machine learning algorithms, which reduces uh, uh, two things. Uh, Primarily, it enhances your working capital, and the second is it reduces the absolute cost of, my, of uh, operations and hence improves margin, right? And see, I'm a technology guy, but I will always say that I will only implement technology if there's a business benefit. And a lot of those benefits get driven by how finance is going to get a bottom line impact, right? And therefore, for all of your technology initiatives, can you have a clear-cut financial case, and can we work towards that as a business initiative, and on the back of that, do all the technology implementation that we want to do, right? So that is pretty much how we look at uh, uh, any digital disruption or digital transformation exercise is actually led by what business benefits it will deliver, and having a very close monitoring of how the benefits are getting delivered. Right, uh, one big part, we, I've touched upon this earlier, is on the assortment, right? So ultimately, can I learn from one channel and apply it to the other? Good example of Lenskart today where they spoke about learning from what uh, online does and applying it to how offline functions, right? So a lot of assortment is around looking at an integrated view of the channel. Final part, people. We've seen that the biggest enabler for digital disruption, the single biggest key success factor is how well people are trained. Right, training achieves two things. One is they're aware of whatever technology is being implemented, and second, adoption levels go up. Right, and therefore, if I were to look at one key success factor, doesn't matter what the shiny objects are, doesn't matter what the technology is, if a digital disruption does not factor in a very methodical way of approaching change and training people, it's not going to succeed, right? And therefore, a lot of what we do is around people, and hence, uh, it's not just about uh, uh, addressing uh, operational issues of people, but also like we saw in the earlier presentation, Gen Z has a very different view of what the workplace should be, and hence, how is it that we promote uh, what they need, flexibility in uh, where they work from, timings in work, etc. right? So there's a whole host of different things which are enabled through technology, and therefore you can track productivity, etc. when things go uh, distant and remote, rather than just being functioning out of office. Hence, uh, that's the final uh, area where the report would focus on. And uh, like we said, the way forward, uh, it's not about three key messages. Uh, it's about digital, right? It's where digital and uh, physical come together. The second is it's about a data-driven organization. Now, data can be internal. It's driven by your supply chain, your finance. It's also driven on customers and one view of having uh, customer data and may being made available. And the third big piece is on the demand generation and demand fulfillment side. The key areas of investment are around looking at uh, reducing cost to serve and increasing return on catchment. So that's broadly what this report is about. A lot of what uh, we talk on technology will be to enable some of these key business uh, areas of focus.